image tiled eagle. Again, hand raised, so you can see, very, very used to having lots and lots of people around. I think he's very interested in that little tasty horse over there at the moment though. Alrighty, so Zori is the largest member of the raptor family in Australia. So you can see he's an amazingly big and impressive hunter. These guys can travel over huge distances, over 50 kilometres without even stopping. They do this by gliding, so he'll lock his wings in and he'll be able to just soar way, way up in the air. Now while he's up there, he's not just having a rest and travelling from A to B. What he can be doing is looking for food. He can see something the size of a rabbit from up to 20 kilometres away. Now we've had reports of these guys flying up to 10,000 metres up. So even from that huge, huge distance, he'd be able to be spotting his prey on the ground. And he does that with those incredible eyes that he's showing off at the moment. Now you can see his eyes look quite different from Toby's, whereas Toby's are right on the side of his head and quite open so that he can see behind him. Zoro's almost points downwards and has that large ridge over the top. This means if I pick him up above you, you can see that all of that power in those eyes is focused downwards. This means that he can see underneath him really, really well, and he doesn't need to see behind him. There is nothing else in nature that eats a fully grown wedge-tail eagle. So when he's out there flying and hunting, unlike the other birds, he doesn't need to worry about any predators that might sneak up on him. He is the biggest, baddest thing that's out there. Now, can I pop on your hood? Apart from the females, the females do rule in the eagle world. Alrighty, I'll pop on his hood and we'll go over some of his other hunting features. on. For Zorro, it's almost a security blanket. It's the exact same theory as when you put a towel over a budgie cage and they just go to sleep. For him, it's the same thing. We just can't carry him around with a towel over his head all the time because it doesn't look very good. So instead, he's got this beautiful custom-made hood. We get all of our hoods um, made individually. Lovely! individually for our birds and they're all made in America so they're very very flash. You can come up later and have a nice close look at those. You can also see he actually has on a bit of other equipment. He has on anklets and jesses, a bit tail, and he also has on a leather leash. That's basically just like a leash on a dog. It just means that if something was to happen and he tried to jump off my arm, but I still have a hold of him, so he's nice and safe. I'm not going to lose him, I'm not going to have to spend hours trying to coax him out of a tree or anything like that. Now, the reason why we have all of this gear on him, this comes from falconry. Things like hoods and the gauntlet, which is the glove and the jesses, we know date back to at least 3,000 years ago. The reason why people use all this equipment is to hunt with the birds. And when you imagine, he can hunt something the size of a full-grown kangaroo. So they are an amazing hunting bird. Now the way that he does that, again, is with those feet. His first weapon is that very large claw you can see on the back. This is the killing claw. And it does exactly what its name suggests. It kills his prey. So that goes straight through the spine and the neck and disables their prey very, very quickly. Now if that misses, he actually has a backup. What he can do is he can squeeze with those hands. Can everybody here make a fist? Squeeze really, really hard. Hard as you can. Now the average 
person has about half a kilo worth of crushing power within their fist. Zoro here has six ton. That's the equivalent of three elephants worth of pressure within those feet. So if that back claw happens to miss the spine, he can simply break open the skull. Now he is in fact an extremely lazy hunter. If he can simply find something that's already dead, that's always what he will feed on. So quite often they feed on roadkill, and if they find something like a dead lamb, they'll absolutely eat that too. Now this has got wedge-tail eagles into a huge amount of trouble in the past because they quite often get found feeding on lambs. Now we've found that they don't actually kill as many lambs as we first thought. Foxes tend to do most of the damage. So we used to shoot them. Not only did we shoot them, the government would pay you to shoot wedge-tailed eagles. In one year, just in Western Australia, over 100,000 wedge-tailed eagles were shot. Now since then, they've become a fully protected species and their numbers have more than doubled. So they're a real conservation success story. Now, I know it's probably a bit hard to see Zorro from down there. So again, if you come over to our stand, you can have a hold of him. Again, we just ask for a $5 donation. All the donations go directly into our conservation, our education and our breeding programs. So they do go directly into helping our birds and to helping all of our conservation efforts. So other than that, guys, I'll just say thank you very, very much for listening. And if you have any questions, please come and see us after. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Alison and the fantastic team. And of course, like she said, if you do want to check out some of these birds a bit more closely and even hold one, they're just at the stall, just on the other side of the, of the pet stall stall. So make sure that you come say hi to these guys. They're fantastic people. They love a chat. And uh, we're going to be back uh, at one o'clock.